And so we've seen the energies that, that they become the same force. So the idea is the other force, the strong nuclear force, if you go to higher energies and temperatures, converges. And then you have some things called grand unified theories. And then gravity makes its lethargic way back and, and unifies with them at something called the Planck energy which is immensely short time scales after the origin of the universe, if you want to, very, very hot. So it's so a way in excess of anything. You, so if you just want to just create black holes in a lab, then the naive thing is you'd have to go to those energies and there's nowhere in the universe, you'd never do it. You'd have a particle accelerator the side of the observable universe and it wouldn't be big enough. Wow. But if you allow extra dimensions in space, so you imagine that, so we would live in a three dimensional space and then there's time as well, so we've got four dimensions. If you allow there to be five or six or 13, I think the string theory, that they keep changing their mind. What you can do is you can arrange for that energy scale at which gravity becomes important to, 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 to come up so the temperatures to drop. So you can, arrange, you can arrange in some contrived way to get to the point where you could possibly uh, access gravity, see gravity in action, as it were, in particle accelerators. And in that case, you, you would produce little black holes, which would then evaporate away very quickly, we think, through a process called Hawking radiation, and they'd be, they'd be gone. So, so you can conceive of a way that you could if given a big of a leap that there are extra dimensions in the universe and given that they're configured in the right way that you can imagine that you could do it. And then How many particles would be in a tennis ball? <laughs>